Hey guys, my name is Dan. I'm a veterinarian, and did you guys know there are veterinary specialists out there now? Veterinary specialists is a really, really common thing. As a veterinarian, guys, I went to school for eight years. I did four years of undergrad and then four years of veterinary school. And then after that, I started practicing general practice, where I do surgery, and I do medicine, and I do basically everything under the sun. And then there's some things that I, I don't do because it gets too complicated or too extensive or surgically too, too much. For that reason, guys, there are veterinary specialists. People that go to school an additional, in most cases, five years beyond what I do. These veterinary specialists include, but aren't limited to, guys like ophthalmology or eye work. And, you know, they remove cataracts. Uh, surgery, where they do major bone remodeling, uh, plating, pinning. Yeah, uh, medicine, uh, where they work up really complicated cases and manage things that are above the general practitioner. Oncology, where they you know manage cancer and have different protocols for chemotherapy and radiation. Also, guys, dermatology. So there are a lot of different specialties out there now, and a lot of veterinarians are, are pursuing those. Now, those specialties, uh, they can get you answers, and they will do an excellent job because that's all they do all day long. But a veterinary specialist is more expensive, and it's more time consuming, of course. So when you're thinking about your doggy, one, that's why I encourage pet insurance anymore because my goodness, these specialties are really expensive. And 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 two, if you go somewhere and you want to get treated, you want to do everything possible. So having a pet insurance doesn't limit you on what you can do because of financial restrictions. You just think about your doggy or your kitty and what's best for them. When you go to your veterinarian, now, in most cases, they can fix most problems. However, if the problem is not being fixed, or you feel like it's just getting out of control, you've been there a billion times, and it's getting better, always ask for a consult. So just saying, you know, I would love to see a specialist. Do you have any recommendations? That should be the way you approach it. Your veterinarian can send you over to a specialist just like that, and you can be seen in most cases within days or weeks, depending on how serious the problem is. For example, when I get a really tough neuro case, I will send them to a neurologist. If I'm not sure what's going on with the, the seizures or do we have meningitis or we have, do we have some kind of funny brain lesion, I want an MRI, right? And I can't do a general practice. It's like a human can't do a general practice and an MD can't. So I'm going to send them over to see a specialist in neurology. When I have a case and I'm working up, one, if right away if I feel like I need a specialist, I'll refer them the first day. Number two, if I have a case that's not getting better, it happens a lot in like dermatology, ophthalmology internal medicine you're working it up and it's not getting better or it's getting more complicated and we're not tying up the loose ends in those cases consulting have the veterinary specialist look over your case history and then having them hopefully conclude the case with resolution diagnosis and treatment is the best option so guys, again, there are veterinary specialists out there. They do great work. I know it is a level up regarding like time commitment and specialty and finances. But if your dog's not getting better, always consider that. You can always get a second opinion and a general practitioner, but getting a specialist opinion is the gold standard. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. You guys have a great day and take care.